Hallelujah. Good morning, church. How's everybody this morning? Welcome to Christ Chapel this morning. It's good to see all your faces. The Lord says, I was glad when they said to me, come, let us come up to the house of the Lord. Amen? So I am glad. Are you glad this morning? Yes. Amen. It's good to have you all here. Let's, let's bow our heads this morning in prayer. Amen? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious and glorious name, Father, we have come into your house. Father, entering through your gates with thanksgiving and praise to give glory unto you, Lord. And we thank you for your presence. We invite your presence in a wonderful, tangible way in this body this morning. Father, we need you. Oh, how we need you, Father. We need you so desperately to change our hearts continuously, Father, for your glory, for your honor, for your praise. Father, as we come into the service this morning, we ask that you would minister, that you would loose your Holy Spirit in this body this morning and touch each one of us this morning who needs a touch of whatever thing they've come in for this morning. Whatever they have, whatever hunger they have, Father, we ask that you just bless their hunger. Father, for whatever thirsting, we ask that you quench their thirsting through your Holy Spirit. Father, for sickness in the body, Father, we ask for healing this morning. We ask for a healing touch because in the body there are those that need a special touch this morning. And we thank you for that. But Father, as we come to this time of worship, let us lift up our hearts to you and give you glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I'm going to make a, a quick uh, quick uh, announcement this, this morning. In your bulletin, uh, you will find there um, the March announcements in there this morning. If you would look to uh, today's service, you'll find uh, there's going to be our worship service this morning at 1030, starting now. As well as we have, uh, there's a joint uh, board meeting uh, right after church this morning, correct? There and stuff, and I want to make special special uh, note here too. If you have any, uh, the number for the chapel is right here. If you have any need whatsoever, please call. Please call. Don't be afraid to call. Just call. Amen. And uh, in in terms of in terms of the rotation and the prayer, you'll see the with Rick and Sandy and Mert. And Jenny, Father, uh, we want to thank you for those that have a heart for, for service. We want to thank you for Karen and Sunday school, which I'm going to make mention. This morning we will not have Sunday school for the children this morning, so they can stay in, in the service with us this morning. As well as, uh, if you flip over the page, you will find uh, the, the missions uh, prayer there as well. As you'll find, uh, you'll, you'll find the, uh, the prayer uh prayer needs that are, that are listed on that page. And I, last Sunday when I was here, I, I want to apologize because I had neglected to make mention of that. And I, I didn't, well, I totally overlooked it, but this morning I'm not. So I want to ask you, um, if it's on your heart, you know, as you look to the, to the list, list ask, ask the Lord who it is you might pray for for the week. Amen? If there's someone that God burdens your heart for, um, ask the Lord who, who it is. Let, let them show you that face of that person and bring that person before the Lord over the week. Amen? Prayer moves mountains. Amen? And without prayer, it, we, it's not effective for the kingdom of God. And that's what we're talking about and, and for the next, these next six, six weeks is, is kingdom truth. Amen? Gospel truth. What is true? And, and we're speaking about that with great joy and a shout. Amen? It's not good to be quiet. Amen? Because you can't hear much in quiet, but when you shout, you can hear a whole lot of things. Amen? So you may get a little deafened in your ears, but I'm going to be shouting. Amen? So we got that. So, so we want to give thanks. And we also want to, want to remember uh, Pastor Jim and Tish as they're away and stuff and, and keep them uh, before the Lord as well as all that are listed on that healing list. And I want to encourage you, uh, uh, we already have one in the basket already, but uh, as, as we're going through the early part of service here, uh, if you have a prayer need, please write it down and we'll put it in the basket and, we'll, we, uh, and shortly we'll, we'll pray over them. Pray over those as, as well as all those that are listed. Amen? So, praise the Lord. We want to thank the Lord. Amen? 
this morning, let, let's stand this morning there, and uh, this morning, as, as we go before the Lord, just a quick intro there, um, if, if you will remember, those of you who were here uh, last Sunday, there I, I, I spoke of uh, hungering and thirsting for the Lord. Is there anyone here this morning that has a hunger for Jesus? If by any chance you don't, it's my prayer that when we get done today, you're going to be more hungry, you're going to be more thirsty, you're going to be more excited and desirous of Jesus. And that's my prayer for this entire month, that our desire, because we're, we've entered into the Lenten season, and, and we, want to, we want to grow closer to the Lord Jesus daily. Amen? We want to, if, if, that, if that flame has, has diminished, or if that flame has gone out, or, or maybe it's just smolding, we, we, we just want to ignite that flame in Jesus once again. Amen? We want to be Christians that burn hot in the name of the Lord. Be on fire for Jesus. And, and uh, it's exciting. It's not dull. Grab, grab your uh, hymn books this, this morning. Um, we, we get news that Lori couldn't be with us, our, our organist, this morning. Uh, due to a death that took place. I believe it was a close school member uh, in the school she oversees. Uh, but please turn with me in the hymn books if you have them there to number 266. And we're going to exercise our voices this morning. There, uh, we won't have the organ or the piano with us this morning. But I'm going to I'm going to try and uh, uh, lead out this this morning as as we can. There, we're gonna, everything good? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Praise God. So this morning we're gonna. We I know I know we're starting out early and our voices might be a little bit dry or whatever. But we're just gonna kind of get them warmed up and, and stuff and, and get them going. So so uh, and then we're gonna continue on in worship this morning. So if you follow along with me this morning, we'll we'll get warmed up in the name of Jesus. Amen. So nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And all precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood. But the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea and nothing but the blood of Jesus and oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know and nothing but the blood of Jesus number three nothing for sin atone, and nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done, and nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, and nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. And nothing but the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Continue on with worship here. 
If you're, if you're desirous of standing and able, I ask you to please stand. If you're not able, please rest yourselves and enjoy worship.
I want you to feel free this morning. If you feel like raising your hands, if you feel like giving a shout, just want to say thank you to the Lord. Just raise your hands and thank you. Heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices, angels above, singing as one.
Jesus. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. And I do say for a moment. We're just going to pause here for just a second, just so you can take your breath. <laughs> Amen. And then we're going to continue forward. This morning, this morning in Mark, chapter 1, verses 15, this is the Lord Jesus speaking and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Those words are in red. Those are the Lord Jesus' words right there. And this morning, we're going to be talking about what is the nature of God's kingdom. You know, we speak of ourselves and we say, what is our nature? But does anybody have a good comprehension of what the nature of God's kingdom is? What the nature of it is? How it looks, how it moves, how it grows, how, how it's a living thing. Amen? God's kingdom is not dead. God's kingdom is alive. And what I'm speaking about of Jesus here is His power, His glory, and His rights. Amen? The right of Jesus. The right that He has well paid the price for through His precious blood at the cross. Amen? And by every strike, all 39 strikes that He took at the cross, He took for our healing. Amen? That we would be made whole healthy, that all our sins through His blood are totally blood washed and forgiven. There is no sin too small, no sin too great that hasn't been blood washed by Jesus. All we have to do is accept it. All we have to do is ask God into our lives and say thank you Lord for what you have done at the cross for me. As you can see, I'm a firm believer in preaching the cross. Amen? Just as Paul was a firm believer in preaching the cross. Jesus came into Galilee preaching that very word that I just read there as to the kingdom of God. Amen? Today we're going to be discussing there and delving into the things of kingdom truth as I had mentioned there. And this morning... I want you to, as, as we go on over these next six weeks, one week has already passed, and as I said, I spoke on thirsting and hungering for Jesus and His righteousness, and how important it is in the life of believers. I'm speaking today primarily to the church. I'm speaking to those that believe in Jesus Christ. Look around you. Look at each one of you today. Just, just turn your heads and look around. You are the church. Amen? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you've accepted Jesus into your heart to be the Lord and Savior over your life, and you've committed your life to the salvation of Jesus Christ, you are His believer. Amen? You are the body. You are the hands and the feet and, and all that moves together as a unity. You are living stones, as it were. And some people say, well, how can a stone live? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. The Lord says even the rocks will cry out if you won't cry out. His, his voice will be made known, and every knee shall bow at the name of Jesus. You know, there are people that are stubborn, and they'll, they'll, they'll uh, hit their hands down, and they'll stomp their feet, and they'll say, I don't care who the Lord is. Well, I'll tell you this, one day, every single knee shall bow and proclaim that He is Lord. Amen? So it's a whole lot easier to get used to doing it right now than then. Amen? Because you have opportunity, you have blessing, you have the Lord willing to come into your life and change what needs to be changed. Amen? And I'm going to be talking about that today as well, about the change that takes place. Is everybody ready to go back to worship? <laughs> We're, no, no. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just take a turn to hymn number 456. You know, we have such a, a good and wonderful Father. Amen? Amen? You know, this day and age, it's sad to say, but fathers don't have a good recognition these days. Because there's been such a falling away that 
fathers have been pretty much pushed out. Not every father I'm speaking about. I'm, I'm talking about a large majority of fathers are not known as the head of their households. Amen. It's sad. It's sad because God calls us to be that headship of the family. Amen. Number 456. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing for a, a father to hear from his child the words, I love you. That is a very seldom and what seems to be a very hard, number 456, if you will, I think that's where I said, yep, that's where I said, thing for someone to say. Now, so many people have experienced so many different things. So for some, to say I love you may be a very strange and hard thing because you don't know what that means or haven't experienced it to the level that, that you're capable to freely say I love you. But you know what? Jesus can come into our hearts and we can begin to understand and experience love. The love that comes from the Father. It's not an earthly love. It's a heavenly love. It's an incorruptible love that comes into our heart, into our being. And through the presence of the Holy Ghost, as, as the Holy Spirit ministers in us, it's able to flow out of us. And that's the love that is abounding. That's the love is, that's agape. That's the love that forgives even the most ugliest thing that has ever happened and says, I still love you. Because the Lord loved us even when we were in our sins, in our sinful nature, even when we were there, He loved us and He came to the cross for us and gave His life. Amen? Let's stand up for one more song here this morning in worship. And let's sing this as a love letter this morning to the Father. You know, if you were to write a love letter to Dad, how would it sound? And if, better yet, if you were to sing it to Dad, how would it sound? Amen? Yeah, I'm not going to get you there yet. <laughs> we'll have another day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me just get us started because we're singing a cappella today. But you know what? Sometimes when you, when, you, when you look at the fact that you yourselves are an instrument of God. You know, some people say, I can't sing. The Lord asks us to lift up a, a shout, a sound, a, a shout of praise. There, he, he doesn't say you have to be the world's best singer. He said, just give him praise. Just give him honor and glory and, and, and lift out what comes out of you. Amen? This morning, you may not, you may be, may not ever have sing a, a perfect note, but it doesn't matter to the Lord. What matters to Jesus is that your heart is honest and true, telling him how you love him. Amen? So this is how we're going to start out this, the, on this song. My Jesus, I love Thee. I know Thou art mine. For Thee all the follies of sin I resign.
Great job. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment right now. We're going to take time for prayer. If you have a prayer need, that needs to be placed in the basket this, this morning and then pass the basket back. If you have something to put out, um, please put it in the basket if you need to. And, uh, and uh, I says, uh, thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Thanks, Val. Anyone else? I want you to please remember um, that list that I spoke of that's in the bulletin of all those prayer needs that are that are on there. Amen. And please, seriously, look at that list and, and ask the Lord, who is the person you would have me to pray extra for this week? Amen. Remember, prayer does wonders. Amen. And God is a God of wonders. Absolutely. Miracles, miraculous things is He. Amen. We got the prayer need here this morning for Linda Mills. And wait a minute, before, I'm so excited, I have two young men here this morning in Jenny's permission. Can I have your boys? I'm going to have them come up and stand with me for prayer. Last Sunday, I missed you guys, amen? <laughs> it's good to have you back. How you doing, boys? God bless you. Good to see you. All right. Thanks. So stand with me. We'll, we'll go over these prayer needs, amen? Linda Mills, recovering from her eye surgery, amen? And we got... Uh, Grandma, Grandma Jo uh, Nyhart, there, uh, the, um, let's see, the Morgan's grandmother, uh, let's see, and, and great grandma, okay, and a 99 year old ready to go home, okay, to meet the Lord, amen, thank you Jesus, and her heart's Jesus, amen, amen, thank you Lord, and, I, and we also have here three different needs here, um, there for um, Michelle's dad who needs a healing touch because he has not been doing very well, right, brother? Yeah. And uh, we, we have uh, here, uh, uh, um, let's see, prayer for uh, Ariel. She, she had, uh, what was it? Her, 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 just busy week. Okay, busy week. week. Okay. And then, of course, uh, uh, Melody was wrestling there for her, her wrestling season. So we want to keep her lifted up. Amen. Plus, all those needs that are listed on, on that. Uh, that prayer request. Let's not forget a single one. Amen. And if you have a need here this morning that hasn't been written down, that's in your heart, deep within your heart, and you just just didn't feel like you had to put it in the in the thing, but you still want it answered, we're going to pray for that this morning, right? Okay, boys. So you stand in with me, right? Okay, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious and glorious name, Father, we come before you with these wonderful prayer needs. Father, we ask of you in your precious name that all these needs will be met here this morning, Father. We thank you. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one, every family, Father, in this basket and all those that are listed in the brochure, Father. We, we, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you minister to your entire body. You bring good health. You bring blessings. You bring financial needs that, that were uh, finances were, were once empty, but you provide. Father, we thank you that you, you give us good health, Father, where sickness has come in. Father, we thank you that you want our spiritual man within us, Father, to be whole, healthy, and strong. So thank you for ministering to the spirit man within us. Father, we want to thank you for all the things that you do for us each and every day. And as we list up these prayer needs to you, Father, we know that we'll receive an answer from you. And we thank you for the answer. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, boys. Good to see you again. Hallelujah. Now this morning... There, I'm going to ask my lovely wife to come there, and uh, if you come, honey, it's time for the, the children's story there, so, okay? Yeah, sure. Maybe seated. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't get much chance to go away if you had to come back. Hallelujah. <laughs>
we talk about Samson and Delilah, and you will not hear. So today I'm going to carry on, continue on the story of Samson and Delilah. Well, today I'm going to talk about more like Delilah. About. Some of you may know the story about Samson. He's the one that had long hair, that God gave him that gift, and if he could cut short, then the spirit of God moved away from him, and he become weak. But God called him to do work and do taking care of God people, and the Philistine was the one that he had to fight with them. So, Deliah is the crew of the woman that loved him, and he loved Deliah, and she tricked him by saying, tell me your strength. And he told her three different ways that he's strained. And if you do this, I will lose my strength. And, um, but he did not tell her the truth. Um, so he deceived her. So she get really angry with him and said, why don't you tell me the truth? What is your strength? So finally, he told her, if you cut my hair, then I lose the strength. So she trapped him because the Philistine said, to find out what his strength is and how he will give you money. And I get they gave her money, paid her for it. And um, she lost the strength, but he lost the strength, and he got captured, he got killed. But what I'm talking about today is Delilah. She lied. Now, each one of us, we've been there, done that. We lie. Um, sometimes we lie for a good reason. And sometimes we lie, we don't mean to lie. And sometimes we lie, we don't even know that we lie. So, she lied, she lied, and she hurt Samson, the one that she loved. Sometimes we lie, we hurt the one we love. And believe it or not, sometimes we hurt ourselves when we lie. So to God people, God children, we should not lie. And if we do, because God said we all fall short before him, and if we do lie, then we repent. And his goodness, he's grateful to forgive us. The topic today for my husband will talk about the nature of the kingdom of God. In all nature, human nature, we fall, we make mistakes, and we lie. And we don't mean to lie, but we lie. I try to remember if I ever lie. And the reason I don't lie because I know if I lie, it will hurt me, and it hurt God, and it hurt the one I love. So I don't lie. I try not to lie. Because that's the way we're supposed to be, not to lie. But to God, a big lie or little lie is always sin. But if we repent, and he will forgive. I remember there was, when I was a little girl, well, not too little, about 10 years old, and um, my parents told me to uh, do some work. And we did some work. And my oldest sister and I had a fight. And um, she smacked me, and I started to cry. And uh, I didn't want to tell my father. I didn't want to say anything. And, uh, because my sister grown up, she's the oldest one, she always think my parents don't love her as much as they love me. So I try not to get her in trouble, so whatever she did to me, I try to keep quiet. So my father was a policeman, so he happened to come home, I would sweep the floor, and he came home and he saw I was crying, and he asked me why I was crying. So I did a little lie. I said, they just went in my eye. That's why I'm crying, dear. Because I didn't want my sister to get in trouble. So I lied to him. I said, they just went in my eye. That's why I cried. But right away, he looked right at my sister. And he know for sure my sister, me and my sister had a problem. She's, right away, he went over there and he got her. And he said, what did you do to your sister? And then she said, I'm so sorry, dear, I'm sorry, I smacked my sister. And then he stopped hating her. And I feel so bad. He got really strong temper. He hated her so bad, and he smacked her. 
I was so scared I didn't know what to do. So I run out the neighborhood and I call people coming in to help. I called this woman. And I realized why I'm calling the woman. She can't do anything. She's a woman. I should call a man. Somebody stormed to go in there and help my dad, you know? So she went in and she tried whatever. Then I went out and called somebody out. And then they come in to help and call my father down. My, my father come down. And my sister so scared. And she took right on. She ran off. And she hide, and she didn't come home for that day. And I was so worried, and I feel bad. See, even though I didn't mean to say anything, and he know. You see, so sometimes we lie, we hurt the one we love. So I encourage you all, never lie, never lie. Because you lie, you hurt God most. You hurt him most, and then you hurt yourself, and then you hurt one another. And if you lie all the time, and the next time you tell the truth, they may not believe you. Because they say, you lied before. Why should I believe you? See, so it's good, never lie. Okay? God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, honey. And children, you may relax with us today. You don't have children's church, so you can have church in church. How's that? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This morning, as, as I mentioned in Mark, there, and I read just briefly in uh, verse 15, and saying that being the words of Jesus, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen? Believing in the kingdom of God is so important there. It's, it's a necessity. As to, as to coming into the kingdom. And the, and the seat today, I'm going to be talking about what is the fundamental condition of entry into the kingdom. You know, if you're going to go into a house that's, uh, that's locked, what do you need? What do you need if you go into it? Say mom and dad says, well, guess what kids? We're going to give you guys a key and you're going to be able to come into our house. We're at that point where we're going to trust you. We're going to give you a key to the house. You're of age and responsibility. And I'm going to give you a key. You can now enter into the house. Amen? And that key is, is a way of entry into. Amen? But what I'm thinking, speaking about here is the entry into the kingdom of God. Amen? So I want to describe that to you today there. And so you get a good understanding of, of what the kingdom is. The kingdom it has, has a head, and his name is Jesus. Amen? I wanted to turn back with you, if you will, in your Bibles. I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version uh, once again. But I want you to turn back with me to Matthew chapter 3 there this, this morning. There, and uh, picture uh, a gentleman called John the Baptist in the wilderness. And, he, and he's coming out. And he's got a message there about the one who's going to come, for which he was not worthy to latch his shoelaces, as he mentioned, that being <laughs> Jesus. Amen? And, uh, and this morning it says, if, you, if you're, you've come with me in Matthew chapter 3, uh, I'm going to be reading there from, from that uh, first verse right on into, uh, into uh, 8 there at this point in time. Okay? So... Here, as we come along, it says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Now I want you to listen carefully to this, this verse, because did you not just hear this? It says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is hand. Did not Jesus say that in Mark? The very same words, amen? And this is, this is the, the prelude, as it were, John the Baptist Given us the news of who's coming. Amen? And the, notice the message has not changed. We're talking about kingdom truth here. The message still stays the same. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? Wherever the kingdom of God is preached, wherever the gospel is preached, repentance is a must and goes with that message. Amen? 
It, it cannot be separated from the fast. You cannot continue into and, and go forward into the kingdom of God unless there is repentance. Repentance, we have to take and turn ourselves from sin and go towards God. Amen? We used to we used to say that an easy way of understanding repentance was turning a 180. Amen? Right? As, as, we, as we go 180 degrees back the other direction. In other words, I'm going this way now. I'm going towards sin. I'm going to Satan. I'm going towards the world. But I'm going to now stop what I'm doing and turn around and come back to Jesus. Amen? I'm going to head to Jesus. And it's a free choice. I'm going to talk about choices here this morning that involve you this morning. I'm going to ask this question once again. What is the fun fundamental condition to the entry into king the kingdom of God? And the key answer to that question is that of repentance, the turning back, and, and what I mentioned in, in, in Matthew here. And, and I want to... If you have paper, or if you have your bulletin, and you have a pen, and you want to take a little note, I'd love for you to be able to take home some information that you can take in. Amen? Some people like to take notes physically. Other people like to hear. Faith comes by hearing, and by hearing of the Word. Amen? When we listen to the Gospel, and when we hear the Gospel, guess what happens to our faith? Our faith increases. Amen? Faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word. Amen? That's a gospel truth. It's a gospel truth. Hearing the word. In other words, you're in my hearing voice today. You're hearing the Lord Jesus speaking through me, speaking to you, and it's the gospel being spoken and you're hearing it today. Amen? And as you hear it, that seed of faith that God initiates in you begins to grow. And it begins to, to create in you uh, a way for which to make a decision for Him. Amen? A decision for Christ. One, I got, I've got five of them that I'm going to give you here today. And, and it's, you know, it's good. You can often throw out two, three, four, ten. If they can take one back home, it's often something. Amen? But I'd like you to take more today. I'd like you to take more as we go over these six weeks together. I'd like you to, I'd like you to get it down deep in your spirit. Your spirit man. The, the, the inner one that lives in you and breathes in, in, and has breath from God inside of you. There's life within you that breathes. Amen? And the Holy Spirit speaks to that. And He speaks that truth to you. And He does not lie. Because He talks of Jesus. And He talks of God the Father. And He can talk of nothing but the Word and truth. Because He is the Spirit of truth. Amen? So you won't, get, you won't hear any wrong thing coming from the Lord. He will only tell you the truth. Number one, for, for your notes uh, and if, in your hearing notes, however you want to take it down, repentance is a free decision on the part of sinners. Notice I didn't say on the, on the part of believers. It's a decision on the part of sinners prior to them becoming believers. Amen? And believing is a very part of intricacy there in, and that makes it possible by, by, by the enabling grace given to them as they hear and believe the gospel. The gospel truth, the word of God. Remember, Jesus Christ is the living word of God. Amen? He's the living word, he living and breathing word that was that came as the Son of God to the cross for us. And he gave the gospel. The, his word to us in its entirety, from cover to cover, it's whole. Amen? And Him, the truth is there. Amen? And that, and faith, and, and faith that includes, this is number two, faith. The substance of things that are not seen, right? And when you talk about substance, substance is something that, that you can take hold of, Right? Now, can you take hold of air, although it's here, right? 
The air that we breathe in, it's, it's a substance that fills this room, fills our lungs, that we can't see, but yet it's absolutely there, and it's imperative for us to have it in order to live. Amen? Faith is another substance there that, that is, it comes within us, there that God seeds and gives to us, that is just as tangible as the air that you breathe. And oftentimes it's hard to, hard to comprehend the invisible when the invisible is still tangible. Amen? And by tangible, you can reach out and touch it. Amen? How can you reach out and touch air? One simple way is stand in a hot summer day in front of a fan. Amen? You don't see that air blowing. But if you put a piece of paper in front of it, you see that, that paper going every which way. If you stand in front of it, your hair goes back and you go, ha, ah, that feels good. Amen? When we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we can't see where He comes from or where He goes, but He comes in and He fills you. Amen? And your vessels are the living temples of God, where He enters in and comes into you and fills you with His presence. Amen? We house the presence of God. No longer... Is a, is a king, the kingdom of God is not accustomed to four walls, but a living human being, amen, that Jesus gave us life into, amen. We are, we have feet, we have hands, we have mouths, we have arms, legs, and God allows us to bring him to all those that would receive him, amen. It's awesome, isn't it, brother? Richard, it's good to see you. God bless you. Amen. So this morning, their repentance, always a condition for salvation. Number two, always, I'm going to repeat that. S repentance, always a condition for salvation. They go hand in hand. Because there has to be a change of and, and if it's not radical, something's wrong. Because according to the gospel, it's a radical change that transpires our life into something new because we come, become a new creature in Jesus Christ, not being the old because the old man has gone, the new man has come. Amen? So if, if you hear the gospel today watered down and it doesn't include the fact that it's a radical change, it means by that I'm saying we cannot continue to stand fast in our sins and continue in that same direction. There has to be a change, if it's a, if it's a gospel change, if it's a kingdom change for Jesus Christ, we have a turning that takes place in our heart. We begin to walk afresh and anew as a new creature in Christ, walking in Jesus, changing in Jesus, and becoming anew. Amen? And you begin to walk with Him in a new life, a new beginning. Amen? The old is dead. The new has come. And you're not the same. That's a good indication of the fruit that is necessary in a person's life as determining has that person actually taken Jesus into their heart and had a change of life, a radical change, and you see the change taking place because they're not the same person. You don't recognize the person anymore. That person that once was is different. How many times have you heard, well, that person was doing all kinds of bad things and, and things were happening and things were going wrong and everything. I saw that person just the other day. You know what? I didn't recognize that person. I had no idea I was talking to the same person because he was different or she was different. Because God got in there and began to change that person's heart. It's a heart change, amen, that gets in us and, and brings out the good in us. Amen? The good being Jesus. The good being the Holy Spirit. Amen? So as I was in verse 2 of chapter 3 in uh, Matthew, I'm going to continue. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the that is he that was spoken of by the prophet Elias, and saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John 
had his raiment of camel hair and his lengthened girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Now there's a, there's a meal in the wilderness for you, huh? <laughs> I, I prefer a steak myself, but, but that's what he ate, amen? That's what sustained him, what God gave him, and he was satisfied with that, amen? It, you know, what, what we consider is something that's satisfying, God may have a different thing in mind for us. Remember, the Israelites were in the, in the desert there, and uh, they used to have to go out and pick up the manna. Pick up the manna, the sustaining food. And it's and that couldn't be kept for a period of time unless it was at the, the holding over for, for the for the for the last day. But but before that it would spoil and go bad. You'd have to eat it right up. Amen? But it was angel food. <laughs> I love that. If you want to eat angels angel food, I, me, I, I like the angel cake. <laughs> but it's sustaining because it came from God and it fed, amen. Then went out him in, into Jerusalem and all Judea and all the rain around about Jordan and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Confession of, us, of our sins is just as important. Amen. To confess our sins before God and, and even before one another there is to release in us the, the thing that has kept us from furthering ourselves in Christ Jesus. Sin should not linger in our lives. If it lingers, we got a problem. Big problem. Because there has to be a release because Jesus gave us forgiveness at the cross. He gave us forgiveness in His precious blood that has given us the opportunity not to stay in our sins, but to be free from sin. You are free indeed. I, I think of, I want to think, have you think here for a moment that repentance was, was something that the old pro prophets spoke about. You know, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, Malachi, you name it. And in the New Testament side, we have Jesus Christ. Speaking of it, who also was called a prophet. And we also have John the Baptist and the New, New Testament Christians. Apostle Paul and all, all the apostles. Same kind of gospel. Not different. Not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? And his gospel hasn't changed. What has changed in the church today is the watering down of the gospel and the lessening thereof. What has changed is sin has gotten in and distorted the truth. There has to be a, a coming back to the, to the pulpit and the altars today of, of, of preachers and teachers and, and those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, lay preachers, that, that will preach the gospel as it is and not change it into something that it never was. Amen? I, for one, am going to speak it as it's true. And if I speak it wrong, I want the Lord to straighten me out and get me right real quick. Amen? That's why it's nice to be in a body, so we can speak to one another to uplift and uphold one another. By upholding one another is a precious thing in the body of Christ. You know, so often we, we come into church, oftentimes we come into church, and, and some people, there's quite a variety. Some people will run to the mega churches. You know why a lot of them run to the mega churches? They can run into a mega church and run back out the same day and never have to see another one of those people that they saw in that large crowd again to bother them throughout the week and say, how are you doing in God on Monday? How are you doing in God on Tuesday? Can I, can I pray for you today for something? Is there something that you have need of that, that I can help you or do for you that you need? A body that is not close does not function the way it needs to according to Christ. Christ is intimate with us. He's in the Father as, as, as the Father is in Him, and we also are in Christ so that we can also be within the Father and filled with the Spirit. But so often we run against a, a wall that, that is put up. That, that You can stay there. I'm good. I can wave at you. But I don't want you coming over here. Uh-uh. I had a lady actually tell me that. She said, I, I want you to see this, Jeff. You see this right here? And she backs up and I said, yeah, I saw what you're doing. She said, that's the line. She said, you can go here, but I don't want you over here. 
And she literally spoke that way to me. She did not want me to step into her life at all because she had framed up a wall that says, you can come this far, but you're not going to go any further than that. Amen? Praise God that His anointing breaks down those walls. Amen? God takes down the walls of hurt and pain and sadness and wrongdoing and ill doings that have come and built up in our life and God reaches in and He touches that person's life and He delivers them from the things that he, they need to be delivered that they may not even realize that is built up and sets them free as long as they're willing, as long as they say yes. Because God is a gentleman. Jesus Christ is a gentleman. He does not force himself on anyone. And I can't think of a better way to find out if, if a person loves him than to not force that person but say, I want you to choose me of your own doing, of your own free will. That's why he gave us free will, so that we can make a right choice within us and, and allow him to do what he does. And literally hand over our life and make Him Lord of our lives. You know, it's, that's another key point right there, is <laughs> allowing Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Because Jesus needs to be the Lord of li life over you, because first of all, you can trust Him wholeheartedly. He has nothing for you but the best there is to come. He wants you free. He wants you delivered. He wants you walking on a pathway of holiness and righteousness. And He wants you to come into heaven one day and be joined with Him. Amen? He wants to have you have that joy unspeakable that is so precious and so wonderful. Is anybody taking down a note at all? Ah, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I have, I have, um, I have a difference in the fact that that the change involves master, master, that master either being Satan and all the things that go with Satan, or being Jesus and allowing Him to be master over your life. You can either be a slave to sin, you can be a slave to darkness. You can be a slave to, to evil in all its ways, or you can be free in Jesus Christ by His precious blood and the cross and all that He did at the cross and have a life everlasting because sin brings nothing but death. To be in sin is to have death. It will bring and reap nothing else but death. If you're going to reap a crop of sin, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of death. If you're going to reap a crop of life in Jesus Christ, you're going to have repentance, you're going to have freedom from sin, and you're going to have a life that's now changed and walking anew and afresh. But it takes a choice. And the choice is you free to make it. Amen? In your lives. And as we grow up, you know, we start out, and, you know, as we're young, I remember the days myself. It seems like we know all the things that we need to know at that age, amen? But as we learn, we find out we didn't learn or know as much as we thought we did. The older we get, you know what? The older we get, the less we know. Isn't that funny? The older we get, the less we know. And it's because the wisdom comes in and says, you know what? You didn't know everything. Because God is a God of wisdom and higher thoughts than our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than ours. What we think, if we can think the most highest quality thought in our earthly mind, it doesn't compare to what Jesus thinks of us. Or, or anything that we should do. Amen? So, Master, I want you to think of a slave. I want you to think, think of, we, 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 well, the Civil War and, and all the blacks that were, were, were enslaved and, and treated poorly. Amen? Do you think for one minute that Satan wants to treat you well? Do you think one 
thing that, that he offers you is going to bring you anything good or something that sustains and everlasting, I tell you not. He will not give you anything good. He only wants to kill, steal, and destroy, and he wants to destroy you because he already lost at the cross. If Satan knew today what he did then, he would have never seen Jesus on that cross. But there was nothing he could do about it. Because God the Father and Jesus already had the plan. And before he knew it, he lost the fight right there at the cross. It was done. It was finished. As Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus completed his work at that cross. Amen? And Satan lost. Now it's up to you as believers in Christ, to pick up what Jesus left us to continue forward. Remember, the book of Acts is a living book. It has not been closed. The book of Acts and its believers in Acts is still ongoing today. You yourselves can walk in the book of Acts today just as the Apostle Paul walked, just as Peter walked, just as James walked, just as everyone that's listed in there, Cornelius and his family, the whole family was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. You can walk the same way today. Filled in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to be talking about kingdom power later on as we go this month. But repentance is key to entry. Amen? That entering into a life that is filled with love and blessing. I'm going to, it's always, you know, God the Father is very good about warning His children. And I want to leave just, just a, a gospel warning here, there at the very end. To define saving faith in a way that does not involve a radical break with sin distorts that biblical view of redemption. Remember, Jesus is our Redeemer. Anything that does not involve that, because the accompaniment of repentance accompanies the gospel message wherever it's spoken, wherever it's preached, wherever it's told, repentance is there. Salvation leads that way. Amen? Because to be filled with Jesus Christ is to have a life that's been changed. It's exciting. It's wonderful. And it fills you with a joy that is, is absolutely fantastic. Amen? And so many people in the church today are lacking that joy. You know, you can allow Satan to steal your joy. And Jesus is our joy. When Excuse me. When we hand over our joy to the enemy, he doesn't go running around with the joy having fun with it. He's stomping on it. Amen. He doesn't want your joy known to others. He doesn't want your freedom known to others. He doesn't know what you, uh, want the enemy knowing what, what in darkness, what, what God delivered you from, what God put you into, what God started, started you on to a new path, a new way. He doesn't want that known. He wants to shut it right down. We stand in a world that's filled with the Antichrist, here a spirit of Antichrist that wants to put down all the things of God and not lift up one thing. But we as believers, as light and salt in this world, bring forth the light through Jesus Christ in us and are the light and salt. Remember, salt, as long as it's fresh, has, has a savoring flavor it brings and it can, and it can uh, uh, preserve things. Amen? So, you, so the Word of God not only preserves us, but it brings the light of Jesus through us. And I'll tell you what, where darkness is the darkest, Jesus is the lightest, and the light that shines in darkness is bright because light overtakes the darkness. Amen? And it brings it forth to the world. And that's why when all of us that love Jesus continue to, to have a desire to be His disciples and, and those that believe in Him begin to walk, that light shines in you, and you can make the difference that will change somebody's life. Amen? Because you're in partnerships with Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name, Father, we ask that you continue to make us disciples of you, Father. 
That, Father, that your church would have a hunger and a thirst, that your church would have the power in the Holy Spirit, that your church, Lord, would loose that spirit, Father, into, the, into this dark world that we live in, Father, and bring light to it in Jesus' name. That we would have the salt that has the savor, that we would be those that love you with a whole heart, Father, and are drawn to you. Father, I often think of uh, that thing with the bug that's drawn to the flame, but I think of us as, as your children, drawn to the flame, which is you. Father, draw us into your light, O oh God. In Jesus' name, Father, heal each and every one that needs a healing here this morning. Bless each and every one that needs a blessing, Father, and let your heart, Father, fill ours. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a glorious week in the Lord. Amen. And come, come back next week. We'll be looking forward to it. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, boys, for helping me again today.